All right, so we're going to continue our discussion with optical sensors. This is the polarized retroreflective photoelectric switch. Uh, there's also a non-polarized version as well. Uh, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, this is uh, similar equipment. This is from uh, LabVolt. Uh, so as you can see here, it actually says 3M, uh, 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 just below Allen Bradley. Well, I should say it says 42EFP2. MPBA2, but just below that it says 3 meter, uh, unlike the previous one, which was 100 millimeters, which was about 4 inches. This is, is that right? Four. Um, and then this one actually goes up to 3 meters. Uh, there's an optimal, probably a little bit less than that. Uh, this is the polarized retro reflective version. Uh, below that you'll see that uh, the, it says brown, blue, white, and black. Uh, those are all sourcing. The positive is being returned there. Uh, through the white and black. So that's where your loads would be. They're on a normally open and normally closed. Uh, what we've got here is the lab volt equipment is actually going to go through and trigger the relay because the sensor itself only puts out about 100 milliamps. It does operate between 11 and it's actually 10.8 and 30 volts DC. Uh, but the idea is with that relay that uh, lab volt has got for us, it can handle up to 2 amps at up to 30 volts DC. We're typically going to be using 24 DC on our control circuit. It has a one millisecond response. Uh, however, the relay is going to be slightly slower than that, right? Um, and like the previous uh, optical sensor, it is an 18 millimeter threaded uh, uh, extension uh, nozzle. I mean, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see it in just a moment here. And it's 35 millimeters deep. It's meant for general purpose environment. It's probably one of the most common uh, and popular sensing modes is to use this re retroreflective with a retroreflective sensor. Uh, one thing that's kind of different with this is the uh, previous sensor that we talked about, the background suppressant. Uh, we didn't need to have a background surface. Um, in other optical sensors, you have a receiver and a transmitter that are separated like you do um, for your garage, right? One on either end. Uh, the uh, background suppressant did not require that because both of the sensors were in the same head. And as you can see here, or uh, we'll see here, is that they both have the same, uh, the sensor and the transmitter are in the same head. However, you do need to have a um, target to shine against and, and a background. It's got to be a retroreflective background. We'll see that in just a moment. So just to re repeat there, what you'll see is that the black is the normally open and the white is the normally closed. All right. So... Let's proceed forward here. Um, as far as the beam pattern, it's a little wider beam pattern than what we saw with the, uh, the, the background suppressing one because it was a shorter distance. Um, so what you'll see at one meter, uh, it's approximately 20 millimeters wide. So 20 millimeters, how wide is that? Well, you know, it's, it's about an inch, right? And then at uh, three meters, or we'll look at two meters, two meters that widest area is like about 40 millimeters. So it's about two inch wide pattern, right? So why do we mention that is because uh, the target has to clear the entire, uh, will basically clear the entire target. Now, the thing about it is if it's only, if it's cleared like three fourths of the target, what you might see is that you're outside of the margin. And so what happens is the relay will, or the sensor will still be on. You'll get the yellow and orange, but allow you to know that you're about to drop that signal. Uh, that's kind of leaving or something has just entered and hasn't quite s set the um, full energize of the output. Now, as far as this sensor, like the other sensor, it can uh, work in 5 to 95% humidity, non-condensing, because again, it's an optical and has a lens on the end, which uh, could, you know, if you get conden condensation, it's not going to work so well. Um, it can withstand high temperature washdowns, just like the previous sensor. Um, another thing that you'll see that there's a background that you have to set up, a reflective background, and it can handle uh, misalignment in that background up to 15%. Now, if you look on the far right-hand side, the response, you'll see the response is highest at one meter. And if you get out to three millimeters, you'll see it starts dropping down to that 1.5 uh, margin. So that's why they call it uh, up to three millimeters. Uh, so what we'll do is to go through, oops, one, one, two, slide too fast. So the idea here is that, um, and I think it may, there's two pictures. There's one's from LabVolt, the other is from the actual um, Alan Bradley sensor. So the idea is that uh, your reflection is coming direct back. And, and yeah, that would work perfect if you had a mirror. It would always come directly back to the object. But we know that it's a cone shape coming out of the sensor. It, uh, you know, 
widens. So we still wanted to come back and we'll talk about the ref retro reflective surface in just a moment here. Uh, the image on the top shows um, from LabVolt does point out that there's this um, R and E, so the transmitter and the, uh, the receiver and the emitter. Uh, and this one, it kind of looks like it's coming back at an angle. But really what happens with retro reflective material is unlike a mirror that if you come in at an angle, it leaves at the same angle uh, at a 90 degree, I should say, to it hitting that. Now, with retroreflective tape or retroreflectors, it's just like reflectors you're familiar with, what happens is if even if the light comes in at an angle, it causes the light to go directly back the direction it came from and does that with kind of glass beads, which kind of cause it to reflect inside of it. Um, you can also do it with a corner cube. You may, may have seen corner cubes around where they shine directly in the corner cube. The nice thing about the corner cube is that it's... Uh, response is, is relatively good. I mean, it's like 2,000 to 3,000 times uh, more reflective than a uh, white background. So um, the corner reflective, but then what we'll be using is either reflector tape or this reflector. Uh, what it causes is the light to come back directly. Now, there's two different types of retroreflective type of material, and we'll talk about that uh, as we go to the next slide. But the idea is more like this image in the bottom left-hand corner where the, the light is coming directly back. And what's going to happen is this object is going to come into the sensing range. Now, you might think it's going to break the signal, but that's not exactly how the retroreflective sensor works. So um, what we're going to talk about is, uh, first of all, the um, I'm sorry, actually, it's kind of how it works with the retroreflective without the polarization. But let's talk about polarization. I don't know if you've ever done this in maybe junior high or high school where uh, they take two polarized lenses and you can look through the polarized lens just like you're looking through you know polarized lens sunglasses but if you take them and you could do this in the store to take two polarized lenses and you actually turn them 90 degrees to each other that you can actually black out all the light uh, by taking those two polarizers in common and so kind of the idea is that light uh, moves as a waveform and what it's showing here, and I, I don't think my cursor actually shows up here. Yeah, it does. So you'll see that the waveform is moving this way. It's not moving up and down, but the happens is the polarized filter causes it to only move in a lateral direction. Now, when it hits a reflector, normally it would maybe come back in that same, or if it hit a mirror, it would come back in the reflected uh, in that same angle, that same lateral angle. But what the retroreflective does is actually shatters it into kind of a, a different unpolarized light and so when that unpolarized light comes back and you hit this receiver here what will happen is that only the amount of light that uh, is well in this now I know it's not lateral this is uh, up and down so only that amount of light will actually come back through that so um, as far as when a target or something hits the target um, and, and what I'm just trying to say is that there's still light coming back. So it's receiving light because it's not coming back in the same lateral form. Now, when he, something hits a target, and even if, and even better if it's a reflective target, but even if it's not reflective, if it's colored, that light will still bounce off of that in that lateral form. Now, when that lateral light comes back, it's what's happening here is that that polarized filter is going to block it. So it actually works opposite of the way the other sensor was working. So when it came into that, that short target range, and it was the four inch target range, and then we had the background that was beyond that. But in that four inch target range, if the light was actually bounced back from that four, and it would kind of determine between those two sensors in the uh, background suppressing, it had two sensors it would detect, okay, one, and the other have different signals coming back. But this one, what happens when the light bounces back, it actually says that it's not receiving a signal. That's how it knows. It's not that it got light, but that it doesn't have light, which seems a little backwards. So the idea is that uh, that polarized light is that's coming out of there, it gets blocked there. Now, um, the idea here is that it's looking for a certain intensity, certain frequency of light, now, there is some possibility um, that you could get some sunlight. And the sunlight, back up here, is coming in as fray frequency like that. And it, it maybe it could potentially uh, trigger. But there's probably not sufficient enough light, right? And so these could potentially 
have some uh, concerns if you have a reflective, reflective surface that may be shining light off of the uh, off a table from the sunlight and back in, it could potentially cause some issues there. But the idea is to to make sure that that uh, reflector is, is set up correctly. But we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so the other thing I, I just kind of mentioned with these reflectors, um, back up one slide here, um, like that corner cube or this uh, uh, glass bead thing. Uh, the Apollo astronauts actually put one up on the moon. And so the idea there was that the they could go through and figure out the distance to the moon to the earth by doing a laser and so you know that's kind of maybe the proof that there's actually uh did land there but there's a reflector up there so they can actually time the uh determine the distance and, and you know different times of the year different times of the month uh, for titles uh gauging and that and such but uh so they did use a rec retro reflective mirror up there so that you know whatever angle you shine from the earth it would directly come back and pretty much directly back it's going to fray a little bit with the laser but um so let's go through and show this now this is going to be a little harder for me to show because i have to have a larger distance uh to actually kind of show some things um now there's there is one thing here oh good the sunlight finally blocked um, so you can see that red spot there, but if I, I've got some ambient light here, so you can't actually see that red dot so well. So I'm just kind of blocking the, this, so you can see that this is not in the infra scan. You actually see the the red light there um, that's coming out, and it's um, you'll see that this is green, so it is powered. And if I go through and put my hand in there, it's not going to trigger it. Okay, uh, and in fact, uh, that's what's kind of backwards behind this, right? Uh, why isn't it triggering it? Uh, if I go to white, it's not triggering it. Black, it's not triggering it. Here's a shiny surface. It's not triggering it. Okay. So now what I have here, and I'm going to have to cover the light up because remember I said this sh it, this shines light back uh, uh, in any direction. Well, um, if I just, the ambient light, it just shines, <laughs> right? It's a little reflector. So I, I kind of just shine block some of the ambient light off here, turn the light off in the room and such so you can see this. So when I turn this over here, oh, there, now it shows that it's on. Okay, so this is kind of an odd thing, right? Um, so it's actually closed. Closed means that it doesn't have an object there. So when you're going to go through and use this, right, uh, what you're probably, if you want something, it depends on how what you want it. Do you want something is there something always there and then you're going to move out you want no it's more likely just going to move something into the area right so with this um, and I don't know if you can see this so well so the red light is on the normally open the normally closed is the green light All right so what happens is the sensors automatically trigger you see the orange and yellow up there and so when it's blocked that's when it's not outputting, okay? Because this is kind of reversed, right? Um, then the other sensor, sensor when you put something in it, the orange and yellow came out. So it's it's a little bit backwards there, um, but I wanted to show you that there's the red light that you could actually see. Let me cover that up a little more. Um, and the idea is that once I go through, let's do the shiny surface, uh, some semi shiny. Yeah, so there. Now do it with a um, not so shiny surface. Well, what do I have here? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I wasn't prepared for that, was I? Okay, so let's see if a marker does this. And it's white so that you can see it. Yeah, so you have to kind of requires it to completely be blocked, right? So that also means there so you, you can if you can kind of see that it's off the target has to completely leave the right so there so it's kind of showing you how that sensor works it's still pretty tight right but uh, the neat really nice thing is here is the distance right i didn't try to do all the distances here um there is let's see That blind spot because there's two lenses there's the emitter and then there's a receiver in there but also you have to have enough of it blocked right 
uh, for it to go off. But what I wanted to show you here is a distance here. I got a tape measure here. And you know, the thing is, all I've got is one meter here, right? Uh, it's going to be work fine with one meter. Let's see if I can target this. So down there is my one target. Up here is my 36, right? Get that aiming in there. See if I can get this target down. There, okay. So I'm waiting for it to actually trigger, right? I'm at 36 inches there, right? And I can get something a little bit bigger, like my cell phone. So there it came on, right? It's not, it's got to cover, I mean, because the, the signal, as you can see, I, I, maybe you can see that red down there. Let's go through and just do a quick measurement um, with my standard ruler. I need a metric, right? Because it said it was 40 millimeters or something like that. Uh, there, there we go. So we're at one, uh, 36, that's almost one meter. And let me just put a finger on it. Uh, that's 40 millimeters there. That where my thumb is, right? So uh, I think it said it needed 20 or something. Um, yeah, it's a 20 millimeters. It has to be blocked in order for that to go through it and trigger. So the nice thing about this is the distance. Uh, you can have up to uh, to uh, three meters, and that's why you oftentimes see them at like door entries. You know, it's wide enough. It's not that little four inch uh, gap there. So this is the um, the polarized version of that. Uh, there's also a non-polarized version as well, but the non-polarized version uh, can have some false positives with it. So that's why the retroreflective is a little bit more uh, popular. All right. Uh, so let me take a peek here. I think that was all the notes that I was going to go through and perform here. Um, Oh, uh, other than going through and do that slight angle. Remember I told you can deal up to a 15, 15 degree. So let's go through and turn this. Uh, so 15 probably be that. That's like uh, 45. Let's see what happens. No, that's more like 30. Let's see what happens at 30. Yeah, still doing pretty good. Yeah, you know, it. this is, it's also distance, right? So it can probably hang ha handle more of a distance close up here. So the one thing that's kind of different here, I don't know if you can, yeah. So the one thing that's uh, um, uh, different here is that then you actually have to have a background target, right? So if I go through and, and uh, put the white or something like that, or just you know the, you got some the wood background, whatever, uh, you're not going to be able to trigger it. You have to have this retro reflective to send the signal directly back. It's, it's got a signal and you're trying to break it, right? So that's where it's a little bit different than the um, background suppressing sensor. Uh, you still have, to, uh, the other, what I'm saying is the background suppressing didn't need to have an end target like we do here. Uh, the fortunate thing about this is uh, you don't have to have power on that. It's not like a garage door where you have to have a receiver down there, the three wire receiver with a photo uh, sensor down there. All right. There we go. That would be the end there of that uh, sensor there. That's the um, polarized retroreflective sensor. Uh, again, with this one here, I'll just try to wrap up here um, for this sensor because you're probably, I mean, it kind of depends what you're doing, right? Um, suppose that you want to set up a curtain of safety, right? So if anyone goes through and breaks it, then you want to go through and turn off the equipment or what have you. Okay, so what happened here is the green or the normally, what we're looking there is we're looking for the signal coming off the normally closed button, where previously we were looking off the normally open. So when something moved in, that's when we triggered out. So the other thing is it might be that maybe you have something in the target. Um, I'm not kind of thinking of what that might be. I don't know. Maybe it's a fire extinguisher. It's kind of a silly example. But as soon as somebody picked up the fire extinguisher, go off. So um, 
you know, however you want to trigger that. It's probably not the situation where it's probably the other situation. It's not the situation where something is moving out, but something is moving into the target. But if it's something that's in the target, you want it, you know, it's going to be moved out of it. You want to know it's out. Well, then obviously uh, you would go through and use the uh, normally open contact instead. All right. There we go.